This is with upside down styling. So I did my old routine today to see the difference and to see if it would make my hair look any different. And I think it does. I still love it. I still love it. Hello, this is April with The Curl Story. Today is all about my old routine versus my new routine. A couple years ago, I started posting videos on my styling routine and I shared an upside down styling routine. That's how many of us learned when we were first starting our curly hair journey, but I've mostly been doing upright styling lately. So I've had a lot of comments about that. And so I wanted to share why I changed and what we can do to make both of these styling routines work great for us. So with upside down styling, I used to do this over the bathtub with dripping wet hair, of course, because it was just easier to clean up the mess that way. But I would start with my hydration process. So after shampooing upright, of course, then I would apply my conditioner and really work it through. So rather than just letting the conditioner just sit on my hair for a few minutes and then rinsing it out. I was really working it through until I can feel my hair soften, get slippery, was able to detangle my hair. Then I would rinse it out and begin adding my gel. So my hair is thick hair. I have thick strands of hair. So if I just took out one strand of hair and laid it on the counter, you would clearly see it. It's a thick strand of hair, not only dark <laughs> color, but it's visible. So fine hair, for example, would be that you could hardly see the hair, you know, a single hair on the table or on the floor. It would just be so, so fine that you would need multiple strands of hair together to be able to see it from far away. And you can feel the difference too. Fine hair, you might not be able to feel it in your fingers, whereas thick hair, you can, you can definitely feel it. And some of my hair is smooth, some of it's coarse. Coarse means a little bit bumpy. So we all have different textures and different thicknesses and different amount of hair, which means the density of hair, how much hair you have per square inch on your head. So I have thick strands of hair, medium density. So when I was flipped over and trying to rake in gel, it was really hard for me to disperse gel all throughout my hair that way. Of course, I tried it just with all of my hair and trying to rake it through. And But the problem was, is I was really only applying gel, you know, on that bottom part and I couldn't get it here couldn't get it through the bottom of my hair into the top of my hair. So then I learned how to at least section my hair in half. So I would flip over and then this bottom half, I would apply my gel and then the top half and I would rake it through. And then I would scrunch with water and scrunch, really depending on that scrunching to help me disperse the gel throughout my hair. But all of that scrunching would create a lot of frizz, unfortunately. So it was too much movement, too much friction that would disturb those curl families, separate them. So, and I would keep trying to smooth them out, but I was so nervous that the gel wouldn't be evenly dispersed throughout my hair that I just over scrunched. So that is a thing you can over scrunch. <laughs> so be careful. My main problems with upside down styling, not only did my back hurt, I was fighting with frizz. I was fighting with not being able to disperse my product evenly. And the part of my hair that had the least amount of product was the top part, the top part that you see. So the bottom part of my hair had the most gel because that's the top when I'm flipped over. But then when I flip everything back, this is the part that got less love and the curls were scrunched in all weird positions because I'm just, you know, scrunching and not seeing what I'm doing. So I had, you know, different curls. The parting was never quite right. So upside down styling was always a bit of a challenge. It was fairly quick to apply my product, but when I thought I was done with that process and ready to start drying my hair, I had to do so much touching up that the touching up took me almost just as much time as it did applying the product upside down. So that's when I started experimenting with upright styling. So as you've seen with my latest videos where I use sectioning clips and I just go section by section from the bottom all the way up to the top, I have a lot more control on how I want the top of my hair to be styled. 
My curls are smooth. I don't have any fixes to do after I apply my products. It's just dry and go. But it does seem like it might be more complicated to do it that way. So I did wanna share with you a little tip for the upright styling. And you've seen that I use this sectioning clip um, and it's got this grip on the thumb pad so it's easy to use on wet hair. But let's say for example, that if I've already completed this bottom section, then, so you know that I use that to hold up the area that I haven't done, but you can also use this to clip down the sections that you've already styled. So then when you're applying your product on this top section, it doesn't get mixed up with what you've already completed. And then you can just keep adding to that and keep working on other sections. So you might need maybe two or three of these to hold down the bottom sections of your hair that you've already done, and then one to hold up the rest of your hair on top that you still need to take down little by little to keep going. So you can use these in multiple ways, and it seems like it might take longer, but I actually believe that upright styling is faster, but yes, you're right, I do need to time it for you. <laughs> my upright styling only takes me about 10 minutes to apply all of my product, then I can begin my drying process after that. The upside down styling process may have taken the same amount of time, but then I did have a lot of touch-ups to do after that, which made it take longer in the ends. So I wanted to show you this as well. My curls are less defined. I have a lot more volume. And my old routine, I did also use a volumizing spray at the roots, which, why did I stop? It's so amazing. I was trying to simplify my products and use less products to find out what I actually needed for my hair. And I don't need a volumizing product, but I love a volumizing product. So especially with longer hair, it's heavier and gets more weight down. And these volumizing products just give my roots some more structure and grit to stay up all day long. I did have a lot of touch-ups to do because I did the exact same routines. I had a lot of messiness all over the top of my hair. The curls are going every which way. I had to wet and redo these front pieces. I had to add hairspray at the crown to tame down the flyaways. There were quite a bit of stringy bits that I had to re-wet and try to smooth them back into a neighboring curl family. <laughs> but I am in love with the volume. So I wanted to share these two techniques with you and let you know that I'm gonna go and try to perfect my upside down styling technique a little bit more because I want to try to find a way to improve the product application so that that there aren't so many fixes that have to be done. So it seems like initially that would be a faster process, but it creates a lot more issues, especially for the top of your hair, because that's the hair that you can't see when you're styling upside down. And you really can't control what's going on up there. You can't do your parting very well. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm also gonna explore some more volumizing products and and yes, I, I love volume for my hair, but volume is not for everyone. Not everybody needs volume. Some of you already have amazing volume to your hair, so you can definitely skip those upcoming videos. But for those of you who are interested in volumizing products, I'm going to do a little bit more exploration on those because they're fun. <laughs> I love the results that come out from that. And I just wanted to show you that products and technique both make a big difference in your ultimate results. And there is no one way to style your curls. It's really up to how you want your hair to look, how you want your finished curls to be presented. And with different techniques and different products, you can explore how to style your own curls that reflect you, whether you want more volume, more definition, all of the above. <laughs> I enjoy sharing these different techniques and inspirational styling videos with you. So no matter what you do, you can know that you can wear your curls 
for absolutely any occasion, whether it's your own wedding, a job interview, every day at the office, or on vacation, that there are so many beautiful ways to be able to style your hair from quick styling methods to more glam styling methods and everything in between. I hope to help you build your curly hair styling toolbox to enjoy your curls and celebrate them every day. So let me know what your preferences are for upside down styling or upright styling. Why does one way work better for you than another? and do include your hair type, whether you have loose wavy curls, tight curls, long hair, short hair, to help us understand your hair and your hair styling process as well. See what's worked best for you and you might be able to help someone else in our community. I can't wait to hear about it and I'll keep working on more videos to improve, simplify, and speed up these processes for us as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.